with the background described in the last class. Today, we will be discussing about the different components of a hydroelectric power plant and its design. So, primarily what we will discuss today the recapsulation of the components what is used in a hydroelectric power plant and the design of hydroelectric power plant we will be solving one numerical. Then powerhouse of hydroelectric power plant then the primary components which constitute the powerhouse of a hydroelectric power plant will be discussed. So, main components are diversion wear and channels, desilting tank, spillway, fourway, penstock, tail race and powerhouse. So, few more components details we must know while designing a hydroelectric power plant. Like what is diversion wear? This diversion wear is designed to divert and maintain a constant flow in the channel for variable flow in the river throughout the year. A desilting tank is used to trap the suspended silt load and pebbles to minimize erosion damage to the turbine runner which was exclusively discussed in the last class. Forbe tank is a temporary storage of water to be utilized for energy generation and penstock is a water conduit joining a forbe and a turbine and a tail race is a simple water channel to transport discharge from the turbine back to the river. Now, we will be discussing the design aspect of this component by considering a numerical problem. So, we need to design a hydroelectric power plant with an available head of 20 meter and the expected power output is 1 megawatt. The generator is directly coupled to the turbine. The frequency of the generator is 50 hertz and the number of poles is 24. Consider the specific speed of the turbine is 60. Assume the generator and turbine efficiency be 90 percent and 85 percent respectively. So, solution goes something like this what data is given to us head is 20 meter and power output is 1 megawatt output and then frequency is given as 50 hertz and number of poles which is represented by p is 24 and specific speed is given as 60. Generator efficiency 90 percent and turbine efficiency is 85 percent. Okay. Now, before we go for designing, let us go for selection of turbine. This may be I will write 1. The selection will be based upon the available head and specific speed of the turbine. So, our discussion was something like if we have to classify with respect to head, then we will have high head, medium head and low head. If the head is more than 50 meter, then we call it as high head. If it is in the range of 10 to 15 meter, then we call it as medium head and if it is less than 10 meter we call it as low head. Okay. So, in our case head is 20. Okay. So, 
it falls under medium head right so we have many options we can go for cross flow targo multi jet pelton francis pump on turbines so these are the options we have so these three are impulse and these two are reaction turbine right so again we can classify with respect to specific speed of turbine so if we classify based on the specific speed then for pelton wheel it is in the range of 6 to 60 francis 50 to 400 and propeller or kaplan it is 280 to 1000 so in our case ns is given to us is 60 so it falls under this range so our turbine will be francis turbine so it is confirmed so that is how we can call it as Francis turbine is the suitable based on the provided head and specific speed. So our turbine is known now which turbine to be used for this application. So this is the first step of our design. So now next step would be the calculation of power output. So, number 2 I can specify it is calculation of power power output of the turbine. So, this can be written as this is equal to like P turbine output is P generator which is given to us is 1 megawatt and we will have generator efficiency. So, this is 1 megawatt and we will have 0. 9 is the efficiency of the generator. So, if we count it, it will be about 1.11 megawatt. Okay. So, now next step is to find out the number of turbine required, that means number of Francis turbine required to meet the demand. Okay. So, this is number of Francis turbine. required. So, this we can calculate by considering the speed of the turbine, speed of the turbine which is nothing but 120 into f is the frequency divided by p is the pole. So, that means 120 multiplied by 50 divided by 24. So, which is found to be 250 rpm. So, once we know this speed of the turbine which is nothing but n, then we can calculate p by using the relationship n s is equal to n square root of p divided by h 5 by 4. This p we need to calculate this power developed. Okay. Now, if we substitute the value of n s which is 60 and n is 250 and head is given to us is 20 this is 5 by 4. So, once we do this calculation then this P is equal to 103.03 kilowatt. Okay. That means, this is the 
overall power generated by the turbine. So, we need to find out how much power is developed by the individual turbine, right? So, now to meet the demand of 1.11 megawatt, then how many such kind of turbines are required? That we need to find out, okay? That means the number of turbines required will be 1.11 into 10 to the power of 3 divided by 103.03. This is also kilowatt, this is also in kilowatt. So, this is found to be 10.77 which is equivalent to 11. So, 11 Francis turbines are required to meet this total requirement, right? So, this is for single turbine and this was for the overall which was our requirement. So, the number of Francis turbine required is 11. Okay. Now, we need to find out the discharge required through the turbine. So, this is 4. turbine. So, how to calculate? We can use the expression P, this turbine output, this is overall turbine output is equal to Q rho Z then H, then we have turbine efficiency and then we have generator efficiency as well and we can divide it by 1000. So, what you will get is in kilowatt. So, this will be 1.11 into 10 to the power of 3 which is equal to this just need to be calculated. So, this is Q density of water is 1000, Z is 9.81 and H is 20 and then we have 0.9 and 0.85 divided by 1000. So, if we do the calculation, then it is found to be 7.39 cubic meter per second. This is the discharge and this is overall discharge. Okay. So, in one second, water flow has to be 7.39 cubic meter. So, if we consider for a year, for a year total volume of water requirement will be Q for a year, it will be 7.39 multiplied by 365 days into 24 into 3600. So, it is found to be about 233.22 into 10 to the power of 6 cubic meter. This is the yearly water requirement, right? So, once we are done with this, then next step what we can do? We can go for design of pen stock. Design of pen stock. So, now in order to design the pen stock, people have developed multiple correlations and they relate with different parameters. But finally, 
in most of the cases it is found that only one correlation is used for calculation of available head. So, I will just discuss. So, according to United States Bureau of Reclamation, in short, we can write US BR empirical relation, the velocity. Throw the pen stop for a available head H is somewhat like V is equal to 0 0.125 square root of 2 into Z into H. So, in this case, this V, this is represented by sort actually, this is V p, V p is something like this. So, in this case, this V p will be somewhat like 1 to 5 into 2 into 9.81 into 20. So, which is found to be 2.47 meter per second, right. So, now we will also define one term called economic diameter of pen stop. This is coined by Sarkaria in 1979. The relationship goes something like d p is equal to 0 0.71 into p to the power of 0 0.43 h to the power of 0 0.65. So, if we substitute these values like 0 0.71 multiplied by power output of the turbine, you can like turbine output also you can write. This is 1, 1, 0, 1 more 1 to the power of 0 0.43, then h is 20 to the power of 0 0.65. So, it is found to be 2.065 meter. So, this is the economic diameter of the pen stock, right. So, once we are confirmed with the pen stock diameter, then what we can do? We can go for design of forebay. So, this is 6 design of Four way. So, here this discharge through the four ways is taken as the twice the design discharge. Okay. So, this is something like this. We can write discharge through. the four way is taken as twice as the design dishes. So, since we know the value of Q D, so we can find out what is Q F. So, it is 2 into 
cubic meter per second which is about 14.78 cubic meter per second right. Normally this fluid is retained in the forebrain for about 2.5 minutes to 6 minutes. So, let us consider for our case as 2 minutes storage ok. So, assuming detention time as 2.5 minutes. So, if we consider this then from there what you can calculate the volume of the four way. So, the volume of four way will be V f Q f V f is equal to Q f multiplied by T into 60. So, converting we need to second that is why we are multiplying with 60. So, here Q f is already calculated 14.78 and then time is 2.5 minutes into 60 second. So, it will be 2217 cubic meter. This is the volume of the forebay. Also, we need to find out the height of the forebay. So, we can use the expression something like this one. So, assume both freeboard and minimum bottom height as 1 meter. So, it looks something like this. So, this is the four way. So, we know the volume now, volume is known. So, what we need to know is the height, this height we want. So, we can classify height something like this, freeboard height, then submergence height, penstock diameter, then minimum bottom height, right. So, also we can write something like H F B freeboard height, then submergence height is H S, penstock diameter is D P already known to us, then minimum bottom height H B H ok. So, submergence height we can find out by using this expression H S greater than or equal to 1.5 multiplied by V P square by V Z. So, this we can read as small V P ok, this small V P square fine or we can find out this expression 0.5 into V P multiplied by square root of D P ok. So, in this expression we always consider the greater values of H S. So, here in this calculation we found it as 0 0.47 and here we found it as 1.83. So, as a design protocol we need to consider the largest values of H S ok. So, if we have to consider the height of 4 way. So, it will be something like H F is equal to H F B this one plus H S plus D P this diameter of the pen stock. Then minimum bottom height is H B H right. So, already we have considered this one this one is 1 and this one is also 1 meter as 1 meter ok. So, if we substitute this this found to be 1 plus 1.83 plus we have 2.06 then we have 1. So, it will be close to 6 6 meter ok. Now, also we need to assume the mean velocity
in the four way as 0 0.3 meter per seconds. Normally, it is considered in the range of 0 0.2 to 0 0.8 meter per second. Okay. So, from this calculation, we can find out the breadth of four way, which is expressed as B Q F divided by H F multiplied by V F. So, this is known to us 14.78 and h f is 6 multiplied by 0 0.3 which is equivalent to 8.15 meter fine and the same time we can find out the length which can be expressed as l is equal to v f by v f into h f on substitution, we will get a value of 45.03 meter, fine. So, we know all the parameters now in order to characterize 4 way, right. Now, we will go for design of spillway. So, it may be we can name as 7. So, spillway is assumed to be and overfall spillway and also we need to consider a crest which is the highest elevation of the spillway along a central line profile through the spillway. So, if we assume the head over the crest as 0.5 then by using this expression we can find out what is V f where C d is the coefficient of discharge which is taken as 1.7 for this case because it ranges from 1.6 to 2.2 and ls is the length of the spillway. Okay. So, by using this expression, so it is found to be 14.58 is the length of the spillway. right? So, as the length of spillway is less than the length of the four way the design is acceptable. So, that is the strategy we follow for designing this spillway. So, we can counter check whether our design is proper or not. Okay. So, this includes all the components what is required for design of a hydroelectric power plant. So, we have shown the design of spillways, then design of four ways, design of penstock, then number of turbines required once you know the total requirement and also we have shown how to select a turbine. So, this includes the design of a hydroelectric power plant. Now, let us discuss few components which are also relevant as far as hydroelectric power plant is concerned. So, when you talk about uh, powerhouse it includes speed governor, turbine and generator. Right? So, our generator looks something like this normally it is a vertical shaft generator is coupled at the top and turbine is attached below where water comes and strike on the blades and power is generated. So, we must know the purpose of a generator primarily it converts the mechanical energy of the turbine into electrical energy. And the speed of the generator is determined by the type of the turbine right. And there are basically two kinds of generators synchronous and asynchronous also we call as induction for asynchronous generator. And normally, these synchronous generators are used in case of standalone systems. 
and for grid connected schemes both types of like synchronous and induction generators are used. This is a fundamental things when we are talking about a generator. Also we have learned how this speed control is important because that controls the frequency and voltage of the generator. Okay? So now we will also pay attention about speed governor. The traditional governors are not justified for small hydro plants as they are very very expensive. So, what is the alternative approach? Alternative approach is both the mechanical input and electrical output are made to maintain or remain constant. So, how it is done? The flow through the turbine is set at a constant value to keep the input power constant. That is the first thing. Second thing, the load imposed on the generator is made constant by applying a ballast load which is used to waste the generated energy that is not productively used. And thirdly, the electronic load control inserts ELC ensures that generator supplies a constant electrical load. So, role of speed governor is immense in controlling the overall power scenario. And shortcomings are for runoff river schemes, this is not relevant because no provision for storage of water for later productive use. So, now let us take a problem, a micro hydro system is to be installed or designed to supply a single phase 220 volt 50 hertz electrical distribution system having a predicted demand of 4 kilowatt at a power factor of 0 0.82. An electronic load controller, governor and automatic voltage regulator are used to regulate the output. We need to calculate the required fault ampere rating of the generator. A water cooled ballast comprising ordinary heating elements each rated at 250 volt 500 watt which is employed. We need to find out how many heating elements are required in the ballast load. The temperature of water entering and leaving the ballast tank is 25 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius respectively. And again, we need to calculate the flow of water in the ballast tank. And the specific heat of water is given as 4200 joule per kg Kelvin. So, the given data is like electrical distribution system having the predicted load is given as 4 kilowatt. So, the maximum expected load demand which is 4 kilowatt at 0 0.82 power factor. So, what you can find out volt ampere demand which is equal to 4 divided by 0 0.82 which is equal to 4.87 kVA. Okay. So, as per design, we need to add 60 percent extra to the kVA capacity to ensure generator and automatic voltage regulator, we can say AVR reliability and 
to compensate for P R drawn by the electronic load controller. This is voltage regulator and this is electronic load controller. So, we can write the net required V R rating of the generator which is equal to 4.87 into 1.6 which is equal to 7.80 kVA. Okay. So, also we can find out the resistance of the heating element. which is equal to V square by P. So, this is 230 volt is given to us and uh, P is 500 watt. Okay. So, this is power and this is voltage. So, this is given, these values are given. Okay. So, as per calculation it is found to be 105.8 ohm is the resistance. So, at 220 volt the power dissipation dissipation in one element will be V square by R which is 220 volt divided by 105.8 which is found to be 457.47 watt. Okay. So, here if we consider 10 such kind of heating elements then power distribution will be 457 4.70. So, that value will get for 10 numbers of heating elements. Normally, what happens this percentage like uh, dissipation has to be maintained at more than 10 percent. So, if it is more than 10 percent like what I mean to say if we consider say 9 here then things will be different. So, it will be just above 4000 kilowatt which is very very close to the rated one. So, if we consider 9 times of this dissipation or 9 such kind of heating element then this will not suffice the requirement because minimum clearance has to be about 10 percent more than 10 percent or sometimes we can say it is more than 12 percent. Okay. So, 10 percent is recommended. So, if we take 10 such kind of heating elements then what will happen? Let us do the calculation. So, if we consider ten numbers of heating element, the total dissipation will be ten multiplied by four five. 7.47. So, which will be equal to 457470 watt. So, if we multiply with 9, so 9 multiplied by 457.47 which is equal to about 4117.23. So, if we see the difference say for example, 
4.7 minus 4000 divided by 4574.7. So, this is about 12.56 percentage, but if we do the same calculation it is less than 10 percent which is not recommended. So, we have to go for 10 numbers of heating element to meet the demand. Right? So, if we say 4 kilowatt generator output, then the rate of maximum heat dissipation in the ballast is 4000 joule per second because 1 watt will be 1 joule per second right and the temperature difference that means that no if I say cooling heating minus cooling is 25 degree C. Okay. So, how can we calculate the flow rate? Flow rate is it is something like Q is equal to M C P D T. Okay. So, here m dot u 1. So, it is q is the heat q by C p d t. So, if we substitute the value of q here is 4000 then C p is 4200 0 0, and temperature difference is 25. So, this is found to be 0 0.03809 kg per second. Right. So, if I want in liter per second, then 0 0.09 if we divide by 1000 density of water, then it will be cubic meter per second and 1 liter is equal to 10 to the power of minus 3 cubic meter. So, then this will be something like 0 0.03809 liters liters per second okay so this much of water flow need to be maintained to dissipate the heat right so this way we can solve many more problems so, first problem we have shown how to design the different components of a hydroelectric power plant. In the second problems, we have used the ballast and then heat generation will be there. So, how to dissipate the heat that we have calculated, right? Considering some amount of load is exist. Okay? So, in this discussion, I tried to provide many of the aspects which are required to understand properly as far as design of a hydroelectric power plant is concerned. So, we can summarize what we have discussed in this hydroelectric power plant and its conversion technologies. Primarily, we have discussed the different uh, classifications, its working principle and then its plan layout, the different components involved and its design aspects and also we have solved numerical problems to strengthen your understanding as well as how to design a hydroelectric power plant. So, I hope you have enjoyed this lecture. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you.